now the British Broadcasting Corporation proudly present Unnatural Acts. Half an hour of mirth and merriment as our brand new rib-tickling comedy wireless program assaults the airwaves in a fun-packed frolic through the crazy mixed-up world of four happy-go-lucky young people. Our story begins at the home of a blissfully married couple as we drop in on a typical quiet Friday evening at home with the Hardys. I can't think with this beat music. Turn it down. Aren't you ready yet? Jeremy, these pants make me look fat. No, they don't. They look fine, kid. Are you sure they don't make me look fat? No, honestly, they look really nice. I think they make my bum look fat. I mean, do you think they make my bum look fat? Well, since you mentioned it, a, a little. Bastard! <laughs> I can't wear anything without you criticizing me. Nothing I do ever makes you happy. Kit, Paul and Caroline will be here in a minute. Just wear anything. Oh, sure, I'll wear these stereo speakers. <laughs> what about you? Are you going to get ready? I am ready. You're not wearing that. No, I'm just modeling a selection of things for you to throw away. <laughs> but that cardigan's all raggedy. I think it makes me look lean and moody. Yeah, like Jack Benny. <laughs> hey, what happened to that nice jacket I bought you? The one with the padded shoulders. You mean the one that makes me look like a linebacker for the LA Rams? Nice, kind of 40. 40's American, maybe. 40's Britain was a time of scarcity and rationing. Shoulder padding was hard to come by. <laughs> My dad had to make do in a demob suit stuffed with old bits of blackout curtain. That cardigan makes you look round shoulders. People are supposed to have round shoulders. If I didn't, you'd use me a shelving space. <laughs> Come on, Bates. I like you in a suit. I had a perfectly good safari suit. Good is not a word synonymous with safari suits. Safari suits are inherently evil. <laughs> I mean, just, just wear something appropriate. Well, let's see. We're going out with... Paul, uh, disguise would be appropriate. It won't be that bad. Yes, it will. You know the kind of place he'll take us to. It'll be gothic punk night in some converted abattoir in the bowels of Soho with no air conditioning and a bouncer who's on day release from Broadmoor. <laughs> Fuck up, Jer. We've had a lot of fun with Paul. I mean, what was that place we went to It had all night eating, drinking and music? Newport Pagnell Services. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be here in a minute. I wonder what happened to Caroline. I think she was always like that. <laughs> Give her a chance. I think underneath that bland exterior, there's another Caroline trying to escape. So's Charles Manson. That's no reason to encourage them. Jeremy! No, I don't mean it. She's a nice person. She's... Well, she's dependable. She's tolerant. She's reliable. Oh, God, the boring cow's here. <laughs> Wait, what about these pants? Do you think they make me look fat? Get away from me. Oh, hello, Caroline. Come in. Hi. Oh, I love the house. Uh, you've been here lots of times before, Caroline. No, but it always just strikes me. Fine. Well, would you like a drink? No, thanks. I'm not thirsty. Oh, well, what about a bit of music, then? Uh, sorry, I don't play an instrument. No. Would you like to listen to some music? Oh, you mean you play an instrument? No, Caroline, we've got a stereo system. I can play you some music on that. Oh, I see. No, thanks. I listened to some before I came out. <laughs> well, f um, uh, well, how are the children? I haven't got any children. No, no, of course. And Johnny, good for you. Why should you have children? You're not married. Uh, not that people have to be married to have children. Or to be married at all. Maybe you don't want to get married. I mean, who needs children? Kit? I suppose I just think of myself as a childless single parent family, really. Caroline! How's it going? She's fine. She doesn't want a drink, she doesn't want to listen to music, and she doesn't want any children. What? Stop panicking, kid. Everything's under control. Jeremy, just go to the kitchen and get some more dirt. Oh, that's the green stuff in the Tupperware dishes in the Tesco crib. Right. Just get them. So, Caroline, how are things at the bookstore? Oh, I don't really know. I mean, I left work at five o'clock pretty much the same, I reckon. <laughs> Like, are you enjoying your job? Oh, I'm loving it. It's ever so interesting. I've got this policy right of never recommending a book to a customer unless I've read it myself. Really? Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait for weeks. <laughs> Listen, okay, is Jeremy all right? He seems a bit weird. I just think he's worried about his pants. They make his bum look bad. <laughs> Man, eh? You can't live with them and you can't live without them. <laughs> 
What exactly does that mean, Kate? <laughs> well, it's like when someone gives you a fondue set and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> oh, good, that's Paul. I hope he takes us somewhere nice. Last time he promised us a night out with the stars. I mean, it's not that I don't like the planetarium, it's just, you know, I've been there before. <laughs> Hiya, Paul. Hi, Carl. How you doing? Hey, Caroline. Nice one, baby. Okay, team. Ready to roll. Ready to get in the groove. Get down. Get funky. Get mellow. Get with it. Get stuff. Get off my foot, you fat snob. Hey, <laughs> any danger of a drink? Hey, mine's a large one, but I don't like the boast. Whoa, hey. Whoa. Hi, Paul. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, hello there, Paul. Hey, hi, Jezza. Oh, my God. What have you got there? Has the dog been sick or what? It's a bowl of guacamole. Yeah? Oh, well, he shouldn't have eaten in the first place, should he? <laughs> yeah, what about that drink then, eh? Okay, I'll fix us some cocktails. Oh, listen, can I make something? I really like using other people's kitchens. Sure, go ahead. It won't be a tick. So, Paul, what have you been doing with yourself, eh? Well, you know, it is a bit of this, a bit of that, bobbing and weaving, eh? You know me, ducking and diving. Oh, so you've been swimming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, as it happens, yeah. Oh, here comes Caroline. Did you make us a drink? No, I made us a sculpture. <laughs> Nothing much, just a little statue of the Virgin Mary out of potatoes and tin foil. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, it's very nice. Uh, maybe I'll just put it next to the aubergine pop you made us last week. <laughs> oh, oh, that'll be the cat. Yeah, what's the time? He's a little bit previous, isn't he? Oh, never mind. We'll get a drink at the club. Come on, everybody. Let's blow this pop stand. And so our intrepid foursome sally forth to paint the town red in a good old night on the tiles in the vibrant heart of the metropolis. And what better way to get there than in a trusty taxi cab, driven of course by that lovable London character, the inimitable cheeky Cockney cabby. Bloody foreigners, they come over here. They take their jobs, they interfere with our women, and what's more, they stink the place out. Now, I mean, I've got some of them living down our street, you know what I mean? Welsh people, yeah. I'll tell you, <laughs> when they start cleaning up them leaks and that, oh, dear, talk about a pot. I mean, they should bring back national service. They never did me any harm. Mind you, I never did national service, that's probably why. <laughs> now, get out of it, all this stupid twat. Oh dear, might have known it's a woman driver in it. Oh dog dear, that's another thing. I can't believe thing. this guy, somebody nice to jerk. Everyone's entitled to their point of view, darling. Oh yeah, like Himmler was entitled. Yeah. Look, darling, I don't want a scene, okay? They should never let them drive, women. I mean, I mean, present company accepted, but I mean, women are a bunch of scabby old slags, basically, aren't they? I mean, what's she doing out this time of night? Hey, on the road, I mean, some poor bloke's not getting his dinner, that's for sure, is he? I mean, I blame all this women's lib nonsense, frankly. I mean, now, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'd never let my missus go out to work. I'd rather starve, even if I didn't have a job. I mean, I remember a couple of years back when I was out of work for a bit, we did starve. I mean, straight up, our eldest, Doreen, starved to death. Didn't she? <laughs> lovely girl, lovely girl, but she never said a dicky bird. Not a word of complaint, even when she was like a little skeleton, God bless her heart. Mind you, I did cut her tongue out at birth. Well, I mean, you've got to have your ear. You're with it, haven't you? Otherwise, they chew your ear off. Oh, I mean, oh dear, they can't half grab it, can't they? Excuse me. Yeah, what? Could you shut up, please? What? Oh, oh sorry, sorry, am I offending you? I, I, I'm not really like that, I just do it for the tourists, son. <laughs> They seem to expect it. No, I, actually, I'm a geography student at the Middlesex Poly. I, I just do a bit of this cabbie lark in my spare time. Uh, oh, look, here we are. This is the place, isn't it? Right, that'll be uh, £5.60, please. OK, I'll pay for this, and you can all settle with me later. No, no, let's do this properly. Uh, now, there's four of us, so that's 5 60 divided four ways. Plus 15% on top of each there for... Was it 15% or was it 10% for tips now? Yeah. Jeremy, just add 56 pence to £5.60 and divide by four. Actually, I don't think it should be divided. I mean, to be fair, I did have less than everyone else. What? <laughs> well, I didn't look out of the window. <laughs> You all looked out of the windows a lot, especially you, Jeremy, because you were so embarrassed by the driver. Uh, it's, it's OK, it's OK. I'll handle the tab. It's cool, you know what I mean? Uh, as it happens, I'm quite uh, flush at the moment. Pulled down a few extra salt from a little deal I put together this week. Really? What was that? Well, I've got to keep it a little bit stum, Jezza, you know, but uh, let's just say that I found a way to do a crafty little number down at the bank. Eh? What number's that, then? Well, it's uh, what I call my, uh, my personal number. You know, I put the cash card in, tap it out and get the money. <laughs> 
fool. That's your money. He had his now. Finders keepers, know what I mean, eh? <laughs> All right for some, eh? It's tough at the top, pal. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, mate, here you are. And, uh, keep the change, pal. How much did you give him? Uh, five pounds sixty and seven pence tip. Right. Here you are, then. This is the place. Yes, these are the kind of madcap antics that our young scallywags just can't resist. And what's the betting that there are some more scrapes in store for them? Because in the withered world of London's clubland, strict rules of dress and behaviour are the order of the day. Rules which the lovable, no-nonsense rough diamond who guards the entrance seems intent upon applying to the letter. And then they come back in here again, you scabby wee shake. What are you for one? Hey, listen, these dudes are with me, right? No, they're, they're cool, so we'll just, like, uh, breeze on in, yeah? Sorry, Paul, we've got strict dress restrictions on this club. Bloody hell, Jeremy, I knew you'd have trouble getting in dress like that. I'm talking about you, Jimmy. <laughs> me? Oh, what's wrong with my own dress? Trouble with you, Paul, is you're just not a pastel person. Oh. With your skin tone and hair, those bowls... <laughs> Those bold, bright splashes of summer colour are a disaster. Yeah. You should try something more muted, more... more understated, really. Yeah. Rich, deep browns and greens that are more evocative of an autumnal feel. What about me? How do I look? You're fine. Well, maybe those trousers make your bum look a wee bit fat. <laughs> ah, now, your friend here has really got the right idea. Those brown corduroys and puce cardigan have a terrifically symphonic effect with his building colouring. But I tell you what, you look great in a safari suit. <laughs> All right, you straight and come in, but the Wally Hill have to go home and get changed. So one of our switched-on fun seekers falls foul of etiquette. But the night is yet young, and for the lucky three who have gained admission to one of London's hottest groovy beatnik coffee bar style teenage hangouts, hits, throbbing psychedelic sounds, and a bewildering range of exotic cocktails to choose from. Good evening. Beg your pardon? Good evening, and welcome to Cathy. Is this the waiter? Yeah. And what is it like? Does he have a snorkel over his face? It's all part of the atmosphere. Obviously, it's worn as an invaluable aid to incoherence. Oh, <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, it's part of the atmosphere. Welcome to Guppy's Bar. Guppy? It's a theme bar. What's the theme? Tastelessness, I think. <laughs> Aquatics. This is Guppy's, where the nouveau fish come to see and be seen. Would you like to see the menu? Oh, you do food, do you? I thought maybe you just sucked in plankton as you walk around. <laughs> oh. Well, sir, we'll be quite the life and soul of the party tonight, obviously. Well, go have a martini. <clears throat> Cocktails, anyone? Yeah, a martini. Uh, look, martini doesn't count as a cocktail. What do you mean? It's one of the world's greatest cocktails. Mm, now, this is Guppies. We mix interesting cocktails for interesting people, full of all sorts of little bits and pieces. I think what my wife wants is a drink, not a glass of green liquid filled up with a random selection from the Argos catalogue. <laughs> Martini's not a cocktail, is it? Quite right. Now, our Guppies selection includes the Halibut Fizz, the slow, comfortable herring against the wall, or how about the Great Barrier Reef Blaster? That's martini and gin. That's more like with it. With curacao, grenadine, pineapple juice, iced lemon, assorted fruit, a teaspoonful of strawberry Nesquik, some tin sardines, two live goldfish for Dan and the Melissa, a sparkler, and the whole thing topped off with a scale model of the Fort Rail Bridge. Look, I want a drink, not a complete working ecosystem. This is an aquatic bar, and if you come here, you drink aquatic cocktails. Now, just go into the Cousteau lounge and buy something or I'll have you thrown out. Is there any problem here? Are you the manager of this place? That's right. Look, all I want is a martini. I can't drink half these cocktails anyway. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Our cocktail list is very carefully prepared and planned, but of course we can do a martini if you'd like. Oh, just give in to her, won't you? I mean, that's right. Kick and scream enough and she'll get what she wants. I've warned you about being rude before. No, you haven't, you ranty old cow. The customer <laughs> is always right. What a fatuous cliche. So why aren't you wearing the snorkels? Because they can't understand a word I say. Oh, oh darn the luck. Too bad you can still breathe. I'll stuff your martini and you. I can't have you insulting the customers like that. Oh, all right, all right, I'll do it differently. <laughs> You're fired. Oh, good, good. Well, I'll go and hang up my flippers then. 
I'm sorry about that. I'll get you a martini. Thanks, and a mug of Horlicks for my husband. <laughs> oh, by the way, where's the ladies? It's just over there behind the decompression chamber. Okay. Come on, Caroline. We're going to the bathroom. But I'm not dirty. Come on. What about me? Just relax. You know how these places are. Sooner or later, some asshole will come up and talk to you. See you in a bit. Oh, hi, Jeremy. Hello, Paul. We were just talking about you. <laughs> How uh, did you get in? You haven't changed your clothes. <laughs> well, you know, it's just when you've been around a club scene like I have and you've got a bit of sus, there's usually some sort of uh, tasty scam that a streetwise dude like me can use to get into these places. Oh, right. Why are your trousers all wet? Well, in this case, it was a toilet window. <laughs> Stupid place to put it, really, over you, Arnold. Um, here, where's the girls, then? They've gone to the ladies. Oh, well, we won't see them for half an hour, then, will we? Hey? <laughs> Why not? Well, you know what women are like? Not really, no. Well, you know, I mean, they like to go there and have a little netter, don't they? I mean, exchange all those delicate, mysterious, feminine intimacy. Criminy, who died in here? <laughs> I guess toilet paper's out of the question. Honestly, what do they expect us gals to do? Hoist our bums up and straddle these hot air dryers? <laughs> hey, that sounds like fun. <laughs> so, Caroline, have you got the stuff? Is it any good? It's dynamite. Blow your mind. Ah, look at this. Pure and uncut. Just the way I like it. Thanks, Caroline. Oh, it's nothing, really. How can you say Locke's essay concerning human understanding is nothing? The man devoted most of his life to this work, Caroline. Caroline? Caroline, are you listening to me? Caroline, get down off that hot air dryer. <laughs> yes, but what exactly do they talk about in there? Ah, oh, you know, girls talk. Yeah, well, to tell you the truth, that's always puzzled me, really. What, what exactly is girls talk? Oh, you know, things like uh, insanity towels, uh, <laughs> tampoons, <laughs> babies, uh, the myth of sensitivity in the bikini area. Where's that? Uh, it's the region where they tested the first atomic bomb. Oh, <laughs> well, it would be a bit sensitive then, yeah, then. I mean, yeah, that's the sort of stuff that we've been talking about, isn't it? You know, natural childbirth, unnatural childbirth, how to spot those telltale signs that your partner's had a sex change. Yeast infections and whether to take them back to the shop. So, Caroline, if you're to accept Kant's cosmological proof, if anything at all exists, then it's absolutely necessary being exists. And the physiotheological proof is really the same argument, but in a metaphysical dress. So, like, what do you think, Caroline? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I exist. Of course you exist. If you didn't, you'd be an imposter. So you must exist. I'm not sure about me, though. I don't think I exist. Well, not very much, anyway. I always come out dead blurry in photographs. <laughs> Shall we get back? Well, no, not yet. We haven't been here long enough. Long enough for what? Long enough for the guys to get really curious about why we stay in here so long. <laughs> I mean, what else would they have to talk about? Can't you see it ruin our That is why. Women are so scared of, like, going swimming when it's their, you know, special time of the month. Well, where does the moon come into it? Oh, oh, you see. It's because the moon, the moon affects the tides, right? They might get washed out to sea. <laughs> I see now. God, it's amazing how ignorant we are about women's things. Yeah. And now will you please put your hands together and welcome Orlando the Inexplicable. What's this, then? Oh, yeah, yeah, they've, uh, they started having a couple of cabaret acts down here on a Saturday night. This looks like some sort of escapology act. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Look, he's got all the gear, ropes, chains, padlocks. Thank, Thank you so much. much. And, and now you, you will see, see that my assistant, the lovely Helga, has locked the handcuffs, and now she ties the ropes. Ooh, nice and tight. <laughs> Tighter still. Ooh, that's it, lovely. And now the chains. Ooh, nice and tight. Ooh, oh, dear. Hmm, yes, that's it. Tighter. Tighter? Ooh. Blimey, how's he going to get out of that lot? Oh, it's all a trick, actually. Anyone who can hold their breath for 20 minutes and dislocate all their limbs can do this. <laughs> yeah, cool. Look, look at that. Look, look. He's trussed up like a chicken. That's it. And as you can see, I, I can't move at all. Ooh. And now the extremely painful, melded, rubber restraining groin straps are tightened. Oh! And, oh. and, and now Helga will bundle me into the cupboard. Oh, I'm not good now. It's very dark in here. Oh, it's really horrid. Yeah, what's this bloke up to? This is a bit moody, isn't it? No, no, no. This is the old tied-up, painfully and brutally in the dark cupboard routine. 
Made famous by Houdini. Of course, he did it in a straitjacket. Straitjacket? Cool, he must have been mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, such a bad boy. Such a naughty boy, Mummy. Oh, please don't hurt me, Mummy. Oh, please don't lock me in the corner and hit me with a slipper. Oh, please, Mummy, I know I'm a naughty boy. Please don't put on a really tight corset and thrust me mercilessly. Oh, no, I've been such a bad boy. Oh, please don't tie me up and beat me again and again and again. Oh, yes, I've been wicked, oh, wicked, wicked, wicked little boy. Oh, yes, oh, 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 oh. This isn't really your run of the mill escapology act, you know. <laughs> no, no, not exactly, no. no. Oh, look, look, she's letting him out. I've never seen anything like that. Hi, guys, we're back. Oh, hello, Kit. Hello, Caroline. Hi. Hey, listen, listen, I'm glad you missed that geezer who was just on stage. Oh, well disgusting he was. I mean, why can't they just put on a couple of strippers? I'm going to get a drink. Anyone interested? Oh, yeah, thanks. I'll have a pint of shite and cot for Valdheim Brew Special, please. Oh, uh, excuse me. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but, uh, you should be in the movies. Why? Is there something good on its ages since I saw a good film? Yeah, well, maybe we could uh, check it out. Are you some sort of reviewer, then? What do you think of Polanski? Oh, um, uh, nice movie. Uh, listen, uh, have you got a name or do they call you Dreamboat? Well... <laughs> most people stick to Caroline. Well, what do you know? That's my favourite radio station. You know, um, you and me could make music together. I'm not really very musical, actually. Are you in a band, then? No, I just look like a pop star. And, uh, <laughs> you look like a model to me. Oh, no, I'm a real person. <laughs> look, uh, <laughs> oh, why don't we just go back to my place for, uh, coffee? Your place? Well, why do we have to go all the way home for a cup of coffee? Don't they sell it here? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> my place is a little less, uh, crowded. Well, I should hope so. <laughs> they to live somewhere where you have to queue for ten minutes to go to the toilet. Look, uh, uh, why don't we just take off into the night, abandon ourselves to the stars and end up in some dark country lane in my motor? Hmm, <laughs> could do. Countryside's not much fun in the dark. They won't be able to see anything. Exactly, and they won't be able to see what we're up to. Now, look, if you're suggesting we burgle somebody's house, then you can think again. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of getting out of the car. Oh, I see. You want me to come to your house and have sexual intercourse with you? What? <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'll just say goodbye to me, mate. You slack! <laughs> what kind of guy do you think I am? You girls are all the same, you filthy tart. <laughs> Oh, crikey, love's young dream is thwarted once again. But never mind, there are plenty more fish in the sea, and young heartache is soon forgotten as our four funsters relax into the intimate, sophisticated nightclub atmosphere and experience an agreeable frisson of anticipation as the house lights dim, the top of the evening's bill is finally announced, and a glittering top-flight international cabaret artiste takes the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I am Benito the Baffling, and I'm going to astonish you with some breathtaking magical illusions for your entertainment tonight. But first, I would like to ask for the assistance of some kind of lady or gentleman from the audience. Come on, dear. Why don't you... Oh, no, you not me. No, no. no that would be so embarrassing. Oh, here yes, you Yes, yes, yes. You, sir. Very no, good. no. I, I don't... Oh. Yes, that's it. Come up onto the stage. Now, don't be shy. That's it. Now, then. Your name is... Mr. Hardy. <laughs> okay, fine. Right, now, Mr. Hardy, please take this pack of cards. You see, it's a perfectly ordinary pack of cards. That's it, and I'll give them a nice, a good shuffle. No, no, don't worry, I'll pick them up. Uh, no, okay, okay, now that's it. Now, just uh, pick any card you want. Don't show it to me. Now, I give this pack a special magic tap, like so. At Presto! The top card is the card you chose! The six of diamonds! Was it or was it the seven? <laughs> no, no, it was the six. 
Well, it was something like that. Pretty close, anyway. No, no, no. It was this card. Really? <laughs> oh, to be honest, I wasn't paying much attention. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I think it was, actually. You're probably right. But it's a marvellous trick, anyway, really. I mean, I've always thought so. It's quite popular, isn't it? I mean, all magicians do it, don't they? OK, 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 yes, thank you. Now, give the cards back, Mr. Hardy. Thank you. And, and now, uh, I want you to verify to the audience that these are perfectly ordinary metal rings. Well, they're ordinary magician's metal rings from a magic shop, yes. I mean, you couldn't do the trick if they were proper solid metal rings, could you? Forget the rings, Mr. Hardy. OK, now... Now we go straight to the magic cupboard. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the magic cupboard. Okay, so as you can see, a perfectly ordinary, normal cupboard is a completely empty. Oh, it's interesting. No, so just get in, mate. Don't start examining it. Just get in. And so, ladies and gentlemen, now, Mr. Hardy gets into the perfectly ordinary cupboard, assisted by my beautiful assistant, Fifi. Say hello, Fifi. Hello. Thank you, Fifi. <laughs> OK, now, so now I close the door, I tap it with my magic wand, open the door, and, and he has gone from inside the cupboard! Well, I'm not actually going from inside the cupboard altogether. <laughs> Shut up! In fact, there's a sort of panel up there at the back there, and a mirror. It's, uh, it's really quite ingenious. Uh, anyway, what a jolly good trick, and full marks to the people who manufacture these things. It's very good. Well, that's good. It fell apart one show we did. Mind you, assembled it wrong, didn't you, Jeff? Shut up, Mavis! <laughs> Oh, I see. This is how I'm meant to reappear again. It's a sort of spring. It's fascinating. You bastard! Ten years I've been perfecting this trick. Get out of there! Oh, why don't you make him vanish then, Mr. Wonderful? Or can't you get your magic wand up as usual? That's enough out of you, Mavis, you cow! You speak to me like that! Look, I think you should all calm down. You shut up, Mr. Bloody Hardy. I'll kill you! Hey, get off him! Leave my husband alone, big bully, picking on someone half your size. I'm bigger than him, Kit. Shut up, dear. Come and sit down. Bloody American cow! Up yours, pal! Hey! Who threw that drink at me? That's for getting me sacked, you bitch. Six months it took me to get this job as a waiter here and you ruined it on my first night. Uh, OK, uh, just cool it, everyone, OK? You know, no hey, you! How did you get back in here? I told you to go home and get changed. Oh, no, it's that bouncer. I'm coming for you, Paul. Don't worry, Paul, I'll take care of him. What do you mean? I'll just use me anti muggle spray, like oh, this. Oh, no, don't do that, for God's sake. Ah, ah, ah. And I'll set off my personal alarm. Oh, 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 Well, what a scrape. I never thought we'd get out of that one. Yeah, you should have seen the look on that policeman's face when Caroline ate the wheels off his patrol car. <laughs> but what puzzles me is how you knew that bouncer had a pathological fear of kitchenware. Just a wild hunch, I suppose. But what a piece of luck I had the egg whisk in my pocket. <laughs> Why was his face red? Hey, Paul. Where did you learn about that intricate system of tunnels running under London? Well, it was the tube map that gave me the first idea, and after that, it was easy. I'll tell you one thing, though. That's the last time I go out without my library card. Right, Caroline. Martinis, everyone? <laughs> That was a natural act, starring Jeremy Hardy, Kit Hollaback, Caroline Liddy, and Paul B. Davis. The script was written by the cast with additional material by Steve Punt, Alison Renshaw, Pete Sinclair, and John Morris. The program was produced by David Tyler. And join us next week as things go seriously awry when the boss arrives for dinner on the very evening that our heroes are holding a black mass. <laughs>